see. There's beef jerky, quail eggs, and So here we are mixing all the ingredients I said together. There's chili oil, and there's like special tangerine sauce in here. There's like shredded rice paper. We, the key is you have to mix it in, the ingredients really well. So it's a popular Vietnamese snack. I love to eat it every time I visit Vietnam. They really only have it in Orange County here. So I drive like 45 to an hour away to get this. It's like 20, I forgot, it's like 12 or 15 dollars. But you can see here my mom helped me mix it in a big bowl. It's called a rice paper salad, so you mix it like a salad here. And you'll see, I'll share the address below and the shop name and everything. So the shop is called Anvac Up or Anvac OC. So I'm gonna try it for you guys to see. Here's a picture of me holding the big bowl to my face. Here's my whole, I guess, bowl. Looks like a salad bowl. This is a paper, rice paper salad bowl. That I'm gonna eat right now. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Sweet, little tangy, little spicy. I have some quail eggs. Mmm. I think I got this for $15 a bag. I got four of these because it's far for me to drive to the OC. So, when I time to go there, I grab a bunch. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. 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 The texture is like mm. eating those rice paper you use to wrap spring rolls, but you're cutting it out and it's not as soggy because you're not drenching mm. it in water. It's mostly different type mm. of sauces mm. mixing it. We did squeeze a little bit of lime into it as well. Uh, traditionally, people in Vietnam usually squeeze like tangerines or little kumquats, um, fruits, citrusy fruits in here, but we don't really have this, so we use lime, um, but the flavors all mm. taste really good together. Hey everyone, um, so earlier you saw me eat the rice paper salad. So it's really, it's a really interesting Vietnamese snack. Um, I think you should all try. If you want the link, I'm gonna put it at the bottom in the description. But today a topic came to me on the news and I really wanna talk about it because I, I think people should know in this economy. I understand in this economy, there's been a lot of layoffs, a lot of job seekers on the market, and a lot of people looking for new opportunities. Some are on a situation where it's a bit more desperate than others, and I understand that. But when we're desperate, it then opens up the opportunities for scammers to come and, you know, s leech off your desperation and start offering you things that are beyond what's the what's the truth. So I saw in the news, I think yesterday, that um, the percentage of scammers actually are higher now than ever before, even higher than the recession. Um, I forgot the percentage, but I'm going to look it up and put it on the screen here in a bit. And when it comes down to it, these scammers made millions of dollars through job seekers like ourselves, normal people. They ask for your bank account. They want, they want you to pay for referral fees. Um, they scam you by getting your social security up front, social security number, excuse me, up front, so they can use it to become and use, you know, as identity fraud. In my experience, I'm an HR professional. I've been doing it for over more than a decade. I know it doesn't look like it, but I am older than what I really look like. And in my experience, um, obviously through my other video segments, I want to share with you interviewing tips, job seeking tips, um, career tips, things like that. But today we want to focus on job scamming. When we talk about job scamming, I want you to remember three things. Legally, people are not supposed to ask you to pay them to get you a job. 
temp, there are temp agencies, staffing agencies, and recruiters, professional recruiters, who gets money from companies whenever they place you into a job. So depending how much you make or um, a deal that they kind of have an agreement with a certain company, that it, that's called their placement fee. So the job seeker themselves, us as a candidate, we do not pay them. That's number one sign. You gotta remember, you do not need to pay them. Second, no one should ask for your social security number, any of your legal documents before you are onboarding. What onboarding means is essentially your first actual day of work. I'm gonna tell you now, even if you you found a job before you start and they start asking you, oh, can you provide your um, social security number? Can you provide your ID? Can you provide your green card, your passport? That is illegal. There is a legal complaint for them to ask you on your first day of employment. That's called the I-9 verification process. And anyone who works in America would know about the I-9 process, but I guarantee you there's probably 75 to 80% of people who are probably first time job seeker or getting out of college, this is their first job. They always fall for this trap where I need your social security number now or else I can't offer you. Oh, I need to know you have a passport, a green card. They cannot legally ask you any of this until you become their employee on their first day of hire. That's number two. Number three, no one, I say, and I said this again, no one should ask for your bank account numbers up front. Okay. If they're saying, oh, I need to know it so I can pay you and give you a direct deposit. I don't care. By law, you need to sign a piece of paper or even now we're doing online onboarding, an acknowledgement, an authorization to say, yes, I understand. I'm allowing this company's name and has their company's name to deposit money in my bank account for the purpose of my paycheck. And you sign at the bottom. Okay. No one should ask for that up front. Okay. Three things. Obviously, I'm going to share more as we go forward in many more videos, but I want you to know that so no one can get scammed. Thank you so much for watching. Please share to others so you can help everyone out.